Hey, Guitarero! Can you play that song? What song? You know, the one everyone plays. Okay. Oh, come on, don't make me throw you out okay, of here. Okay, okay, okay. You know which one, it's all Spanish and romantic. Oh no. You don't mean that piece? If there's one classical guitar piece that turns heads, it's this one. It's the bread and butter of every street guitarist worldwide. And honestly, it's probably one of the only guitar pieces that most people can at least hum along to. It's considered so cliche that lots of serious classical guitarists won't even touch it. But here's the kicker. We don't even know the name of the piece. The entire backstory is shrouded in mystery. Before we investigate the case any further, let's look at the one thing we do have, the music itself. It's a sorrowful folk song, the melody sighing downwards, it's very singable, the harmony is straightforward. It's an E minor, which is like the guitar's native key. Thanks to the open strings, the first part is quite easy to learn, and beginner students do that often. It works well until they encounter the E major section in the middle. That's suddenly a lot more difficult. This ABA structure, flipping from minor to major and back, isn't unique to this piece. Most famously, of course, it's been used in Tarega's Recuerdos de la Alhambra. It's a pretty common stylistic trick for folkloristic pieces from that era. Which era? <laughs> you see, amazingly, even that question is contentious. What? Who wrote this thing? There's almost a dozen people the composition has been attributed to. Among them, the who's who of Spanish guitar, Daniel Fortea, Tarrega, and even Fernando So. But the juiciest claim comes from Narciso Yepes. Yepes is one of the most influential guitarists of the 20th century. And he definitely helped popularize our mystery piece by playing it in the 1952 war drama Jeux Interdit. Nowadays, the piece is commonly known simply as romance, Spanish romance or even anonymous romance. Yepes had a very elaborate, charismatic story about composing the piece as a young kid. Allegedly, he forgot about the piece and then years later he rediscovered it being plagiarized by rival guitarists. Scandalous! His account is convincing and poetic, but with absolute certainty also entirely fabricated. Hold on. This is digitized audio from an ancient wax cylinder, featuring some Spanish music played by Simon Ramirez. Yep, from that Ramirez family of guitar makers. The recording is inconspicuously labeled Guitar Study by Saw. It was made in Madrid and dates from 1900. Have a listen. For reference, Yepes was born in 1927. Unless he had a time machine, I'm afraid his account might be a tad fictional. Sorry Narciso, you can't have it all. To be fair, Yepes did confirmably do quite a few impressive things, like helping overhaul the entire right hand technique for all guitarist generations to follow, just a small thing. He just didn't compose the Spanish romance. The mystery remains. But that doesn't stop this piece from being great fun to play. And it's a great practice piece to refine your sound and to learn how to separate melody from accompaniment. For the rest of this video, the amazing Scott Tennant is going to pump the nylon with you. And if you want to dive any deeper, consider subscribing to Tome Bass to get access to the full lesson and to a treasure trove of guitar knowledge. So the key to this piece is its beautiful melody. And we're gonna be diving into uh, how to bring out a melody and more so how to balance the, the piece so that the accompaniment is at a level below the melody. That's the most important thing. Uh, bringing out a melody is not necessarily playing the melody that much louder and certainly not 
hammering it with rest strokes all the time. Uh, it's more to do with 90% uh, I'd say with bringing down everything around it. So we have this beautiful melody. When I was a kid learning this piece for the first time, um, I remember my teachers always said to play this melody with a rest stroke. And that was kind of the solution to any piece that had a melody on top. You had to hammer it home with the rest stroke all the time, and which I did I, because, you know, I was a dutiful student and they were telling me to play rest stroke. So I learned how to play uh, melodies like this with rest stroke. Um, but as the years went on and, and uh, my my knowledge of guitar playing expanded, I realized, you know, you could really bring out notes, bring out voices well enough by playing a really good free stroke. So I worked on that. And uh, this is, by the way, this is, for those of you just starting out on this piece, this is a great piece. One of the reasons I chose this is it's a great piece to isolate tone production. And in this case, bringing out this melody. Now, granted, the melody is all with the A finger. Most pieces that we play, whether it's a melody just on its own, or whether it's, a, let's say you're playing a piece that has chords, the melody's on the top, and you're gonna be playing with the A finger most of the time. So uh, that's just my excuse to say this is a good, uh, good chance to work on our A finger tone. So having said that, um, uh, it's not all about, as I said, playing rest stroke, but we want to bring it out. Uh, it has to come out louder than the other notes, but we don't want to hammer the notes of the melody. We don't want to uh, uh, force anything. We want to get a nice round tone um, that's just loud enough. The key is going to be bringing down the other notes uh, to a level below the level of the melody. So we have the melody, and then, you know, playing that. And then here, we'll have the accompaniment. So wherever the melody goes, if we want to rise and fall, the accompaniment goes with it. So what we're going to be working on today is just uh, ways to isolate uh, the melody and to separate the voices between accompaniment and, and the melody. So starting out, we want to make the best tone we can with the A finger. So what you can do here is, if this is something you need to work on, just, just practice with an open string. Move your finger around, different angles. Okay, you might find uh, that you get a better tone playing at a different angle than what I'm playing at now. Uh, that's all fine. So the way I isolate the notes in this piece is by going super slow. So I turn these triplets, I turn them into quarter notes. So I will play just like one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. So this is a really good way to uh, make sure that we're bringing this out consistently, but that these notes below it are also consistent, but below. So this is always here, and this is always a lot softer than you think it should be. I found that listening back to a lot of recordings of myself, and um, which I hate doing by the way, um, and finding out that when I thought I was playing something quiet enough, I was not. So uh, feel free to really dial that accompaniment back, because when we're at tempo, pretty quiet. Okay, so that gets this out of the way, and yet we can hear it. And then the melody comes out all by itself without even having to try. <laughs> 